Hi guys and welcome here to this leak where today we're talking about SG hydrometers. Now an SG hydrometer is used to measure sugar content or more precisely the presence of dissolved solids inside the liquid but for our purposes we normally measure the sugar content. Now if you've already learnt about alcohol meters then you would know that an alcohol meter and an SG hydrometer they look pretty much the same and the design is the same and they work on the same principle which is that it's calibrated to measure the density of a liquid. The more dense the liquid, the more pressure is exerted against the hydrometer, the higher the hydrometer floats. The less dense the liquid, the less uh, pressure is exerted and the deeper it floats. That's basically how a hydrometer works. Now in the case of an alcohol meter, the more alcohol there is, the less dense the liquid uh, um, is and the deeper it floats. So your highest alcohol reading is always at the top. But in the case of an SG hydrometer, you were measuring the presence of dissolved solids. You're measuring the presence of sugar. So therefore, the more sugar there is, the more dense the liquid is, the higher the hydrometer floats. So your highest sugar reading is at the bottom and your lowest sugar reading at the top. So it's the inverse from an alcohol meter. Now these are, um, SG hydrometers are what we call triple scale SG hydrometers. And the reason why it's triple scale is you've got about 14 different scales in which we measure sugar content. You get the SG scale, which the brewers are familiar with. You get the Bulling scale, which used to be the um, wine industry standard in most of the world, but now it's mostly the Western Cape wine industry that still uses Bulling. You get the BRICS scale, which is the m more new or newer scientific sugar measurement scale. Um, you get the Plato scale and so on and so forth. Many different scales to measure the presence of dissolved solids or measure the presence of sugar. But the triple scale SG hydrometer uses the three most important or most common ones. So firstly we have the SG scale. Like I said, those of you with brewing background are very familiar with the SG scale. Starts at 0 0.99, ends at 1.160. Um, very common scale that, like I said, the brewers are familiar and comfortable with, but for a newbie entering into the distilling world, it's sometimes a bit challenging because it doesn't really make sense, it's difficult to use in calculations and so forth. Then we've got the brick scale. Now the brick scale is my personal preferred scale to work because it's a percentage. It's a percentage sugar content, hence calculations and so forth becomes very easy because you're dealing with a percentage. So it starts at zero and ends at 35 bricks. 35% sugar content. The last or the third scale that we have on here is approximate alcohol by volume scale. Now please note, this is not an alcohol meter. That's not measuring the amount of alcohol that you have in your fermentation. You can't float this in the fermentation and see how much alcohol you have in there. It doesn't work like that. In our video about alcohol meters, we discuss why you cannot use an alcohol meter to measure the alcohol content of a fermentation. So what is the approximate alcohol by volume scale? What it basically does is it tells you that at 35 bricks, I have enough sugar to give me 20% alcohol. After a couple of days, now it's fermented. Now I don't have 35 bricks anymore. Now I've got 10 bricks. And 10 bricks is enough to give me 5% alcohol by volume. So how much alcohol is already in my fermentation? That would be 20 minus 5, 15. So I already have 15% alcohol in my fermentation. By the time I reach zero bricks, it started at 35, my al approximate alcohol percentage is now zero. There is no sugar, so I can't get any more alcohol. So how much alcohol is in my fermentation? I started with 20% approximate potential. Now I have 0% approximate potential, 20 minus 0 is 20, so I have 20% in my fermentation. That's how we use an SG hydrometer. Now let me illustrate that for you. In front of me I've got three measuring cylinders, each with 100 mils of water. This one, only water. This one, 5 milliliters of invert sugar, liquid sugar. And this one, 10 milliliters of invert sugar. So what this is illustrating is free samples taken in from a fermentation during the fermentation process. This would be my fermentation at the beginning of fermentation. This would be my fermentation halfway through. This would be my fermentation at the end. So at the beginning of my fermentation, I float my hydrometer in. I lower it slowly, give it a little twirl, and I let it float. Now when you take the reading with a hydrometer, same as with an alcohol meter, you get down and you take your reading 
on the meniscus, at the bottom of the meniscus, the little oval shape that forms due to surface adhesion, at the bottom of that meniscus, you take your reading. You can't lift this up and take your reading. It's not going to be accurate. So we scratch down and we see we're at 10% bricks, 5% approximate alcohol potential. That's about what you would get with a most fruits. So if you've got a fruit juice, I measure it. About 10% bricks is the normal sugar content for most fruits. And I've, that's enough alcohol to give me 5%. Could get that with a, a beer fermentation as well after starch conversion. It's about what a beer would come out at. So 10% in the beginning, 10% bricks, enough for 5% approximate alcohol. Now a couple of days has passed. I take another sample of my fermentation. I measure it again. Now I've got 5% bricks, which is enough for, and sorry, it's moving a little bit here, which is enough for 2.5% alcohol. So it's progressed. Half of my sugar has now been converted to alcohol. So I already have 2.5% alcohol in this fermentation. Going to the end of my fermentation process, I float it in there, it floats a little bit deeper, it's actually touching the bottom. And I've got zero bricks, zero alcohol potential, therefore I now have 5% in this fermentation. That is how we use an SGI hydrometer to track the progress of a fermentation.